Question three. So, liver cells can store excess glucose. Name the polysaccharide that is used to store excess glucose in the liver. All right, stores of excess glucose, two of those. We have starch, which happens in plants, and glycogen, which happens in animals. So what we're gonna do is we're going to be saying this is an animal, because it's a liver cell. So therefore, let's go and write gly, sorry, gl eh, glycogen for our answer for that one there. Um, important with spelling for um, some of these things, like molecules need to have the right spelling. So nice to know what some of these spellings are for glycogen. Name the bond connecting two glucose units together. So glucose uh, saccharides, um, so there's sugars bonded together. What you have there is one of these bonds. This here is a glycosidic covalent bond, but I like to use the term ether for these because they are also, it's an ether linkage. This is an ether bond. Ether is a lot easier to spell than glycosidic, so therefore I always keep it simple with an ether linkage there um, because that linkage, the C to O to C, that is an ether regardless of which molecule it's in. Even if you see it in a random um, pharmaceutical molecule or if they give you a random molecule, if you see this linkage, it's an ether linkage. It's called a glycosidic when it's in a saccharide or when it's in um, a carbohydrate, but everywhere including these guys, it's also still called an ether. So ether is the my go-to for talking about this bond. Next up, we've got glucagon or, um, here, which is a peptide hormone, blah, 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 this stuff here. Draw a diagram of the structure of the section of glucagon peptide shown here. So I need to draw this in the box. So what that means is I need to get my handy data booklet out. Uh, flick over to the back side of that, I think it is here, and I need to start looking for these amino acids. Now, I know that I've got a one, two, um, I've got two peptide linkages, so I'm going to first of all start off with, with those, which is going to be a peptide which looks like this. Then I'm going to draw my MET on this side of that. So therefore, let's find met. It's in alphabetical order, if you didn't realize that already. So it's obviously going to be halfway down here. Um, met is there. So if I then copy exactly what it says, I'll try and get it so I can actually see both of them. Yep, you can see that. So therefore, met is here. I'm going to go to a carbon with a hydrogen and my side chain here, which will be CH2. Oops. Need to make sure my bond goes to my carbon here as well, not to my hydrogen. Be really careful on that one when you're drawing structures to a CH2, then to an, oops, to an S. I've run out of room, so I'm going around the corner. That should be fine. And a C, um, H3C. So I know that bond is going to the hydrogen there. So the bond's going to the carbon. That's going to be an open linkage because I know it's going to be continuing on bonding this way. So I'm going to leave that as open. And then I'm going to connect this to my ASN, which I reckon is one of these acid dudes here. So let's have a look for him. A is at the top, so ASN. Um, let me try and move this around so you can see. Again, I'm going to be putting my hydrogen there and my side chain comes down to CH2, then to... C double bond to O, then to NH2. It's not an acid, it's a uh, basic one, actually. It's interesting. Um, and then I'm gonna make another peptide linkage because that's, wh that's where I am here with a peptide linkage. Go to carbon, to oxygen, to nitrogen, down to hydrogen, across here to THR. Again, flipping around to this one which will be here, um, you can kind of see that, which is good. So THR is this guy, let's put it side by side, and this is it here, to carbon, again to my hydrogen, going down to CH, um, that's going to OH, so that there you can see CHOH, then down to CH3. Okay, after my THR, I've got CWOH, so that's simply just going to be going off and being 
ended. It's not open like this side, it has an end to it over this side because you can see it's going to my CWH there. So that's how I go about drawing these guys, making sure I've got my peptide linkage because that's guaranteed um, in there, and then going either side of that peptide linkage to, to fill out the rest of my um, whatever peptide I have to draw. That's three marks, hopefully, which is good. Next, describe the bonding that is found in the primary and secondary structures of um, this molecule. Obviously, we're looking at primary and secondary structures of proteins here. We've got three marks again. This is a worded question, so the first thing I'm going to do is put in three dot points um, there, so I can try and hit those. Um, I'm going to start off with talking about the primary structure. Primary structure. You guys should know from your actually learning this stuff, that the primary structure of a protein is the order of amino acids. This question also talks about describe the bonding, and the fact that it's the order of amino acids connected by covalent pep, oh, I'm gonna say amide, linkages. They are peptide linkages, but again, I'm just going to write amide because that's what I do. I write ether for this, I write amide for my peptide linkages because I know that's correct as well. Um, and it's easier for me to know what's going on when I say amide for anything to do with proteins. That's my first dot point. My second dot point is my secondary structure. So my secondary structure Alrighty, now this is um, formed from hydrogen bonding. Hydrogen bonding between different uh, amide linkages in the backbone. Probably backbone's not the best word for it, but you get the idea, the backbone of the protein. Um, that's my two things there. Um, I've only really got two points there, so I'm going to try and work out with a third one. And with the secondary structure, I'm going to try and explain this a bit better. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to draw a picture. I'm going to say, I know what this actually looks like. And it's going to be this idea of saying that it's going to be this amide linkage here. And it's going to be a hydrogen bond to the next amide linkage. And that's showing me what's happening with this secondary structure. The fact that it's a linkage between this hydrogen here and this oxygen here, and I can clearly show that. I reckon that's gonna give me my third mark there. Uh, I've got hydrogen bondings, I've got between the amide linkages, I reckon that's enough for three marks. That's fine. Diagrams um, can help you, um, and they can help your explanation as well, so I think they're a great addition there anyway. Next question. Explain why the amino acids serine and um, I'm terrible at pronouncing these glutamine are not needed by the human diet. All right, we're talking about essential amino acids here, which is good. So therefore, um, whereas histidine and th whatever this dude is, theorine, mean, um, correct me with my pronunciation there, are needed. So what this means is we have sir and glue. These are, would be considered non-essential, essential amino acids, acids, and our body can produce these. So our body actually manages um, to make these by itself, whereas HIS and THR, these are known as essential amino acids and our body can not produce these. Um, I didn't do it, but I saw two marks over here and in my head I simply did two dot points and I, you can see that clearly there. And that's making sure I hit both of those points and should be able to get those two marks because I've clearly said two different things here. Just like this one, three marks, dot points. Again, that's good. So just checking back through it, having a look for these. I'm going to quickly glance through my structure and go, yep, my carbon is bonded correctly here. I haven't been sloppy with any of my bonds. 
my bonds are going to my oxygen here. That's all good. My amine, sorry, my amide linkages here. Just checking the fact that they have everything in them. I've got my side chain and my hydrogen opposite that. That's looking pretty good. All right, that is that question done and dusted. I'm not going to look at the examiner's report on this one. Um, obviously, that really extends the length of these videos. So I'm just going to leave that there. And if you want to, you can have a look at them because I've got a link in the description below. Again, tell me how I'm doing. Tell me if you are enjoying this, if it's helping you. And um, I'll keep on doing this for the rest of the questions. Cheers.